This is part two of how to get the perfect finish on your interior walls. Today I'm rolling walls and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how you can get the perfect and amazing finish. But you have to box your paints, mix your paints, marry your paints, whatever you want to call it. It's taking all your paints that you're going to be using for this project, pour them into one bucket because within these paints you could have a tent machine that didn't dispense enough tents. You could have something, uh, an issue with one of the products, a lot numbers with one of the products that could be uh, different and if you don't box them, you're running down the line, you run it and you just have a half a gallon and you go back to do touch-ups on one of the walls down where you started and there was an inconsistency with that paint. You're gonna have touch-up problems, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. This is an absolute essential, what you wanna do um, is box your paints. So I'm gonna be um, mixing all these paints together. One of the nice things about Bear Dynasty is they um, have these pour spouts, so you can just pour the paint out. Now I can see on top of this paint, this is a really dark color right here. And this is another absolutely essential when it comes to getting you know, the perfect finish on your walls. I got tint sitting on the top of the paint because the paint's been sitting here for a while. And um, dark colors like this, the tints begin to float to the top and it's what we call tint float. So we got tint float right here. Happens really um, bad with some paints. Um, good paints, it doesn't happen nearly as bad. But I see that, so what I notice is I need to shake up my paint. So not only do you need to box them, but you need to shake or mix your paints right before you um, do the boxing. Gotta say, so now I'm getting ready to box my paints, these pour spouts um, that Bear has come up with. I've never seen them before uh, from any paints before, um, any other manufacturers, but they are pretty dang cool and they're reusable. So now I'm gonna begin boxing my paints, do it over your drop cloth, I've got three gallons here in a box. Once I box these paints, they're going to be in this bucket. I'm going to be pouring in my cut-in bucket and my roller pan. The paint that I'm using, uh, this Bear product, uh, I just recently started using it, it um, just to test it out and stuff. I haven't used it um, but a couple times. I really like the product. It dries really, really fast. So. Dries really fast, so what I was trying to get to is you want to cover the top of your paint so it doesn't skim over. So once you box them, you want to get a five gallon stir stick, stir it up, and then away you go. What I like to do is instead of letting my cans set here, I'm going to put my lids back on, and then I'm going to throw these pour spouts into a bucket of water. All right, now I'm getting ready to roll my walls. I filled my pan, got my bucket filled, uh, my five gallon bucket of my box paint sitting here. This is something very important. One of the things you always want to do as a painter is cover your buckets, whether you're inside or outside. There's a lot of different ways to cover your buckets. Uh, one of my favorite is just using a cut lid like this. This is a cut lid that we would use if you're, um, you want to cover your bucket and you're running in an aero sprayer. Another one is a brush beanie, which I'm a big fan of. Brush beanie, they're reusable. It's just a go on the bucket. I like to push it down and um, get rid of some of the air. It kind of creates a cone, any condensation. If it's sitting outside, the condensation is going to build up on the baggie. It's going to drip to the end and drip down into the paint. Kind of creates some water over the top so it won't film over the brush beanie. Here's another little device um, that goes over a bucket. It's a cardboard device right here called the Paint Saver Lid. It goes on your bucket just like this. It stays on the bucket just like that. Um, it does have a pop out for a uh, roller right here. If you want to pop it out, this your roller can stick out of it. it. Has a knockout right there that doesn't knock out so easy. But this ends up being Kind of like that knockout is kind of the same is you know the cut lid it is a piece of um 
cardboard, so I'm not a fan of it as much as, because it's still breathable versus the plastic or the plastic lid right there. Um, they, I, don't, I don't think they're really reusable. These are reusable multiple, multiple times. This thing is probably gonna be trash at the end of the day. Not as much of a fan of that, but it is another option out there. It's a paint saver lid. All right, now I'm gonna begin rolling the walls. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks how to get the perfect finish on your walls, especially when using darker colors. The darker colors, the harder it is to get a perfect finish. The scenario I'm gonna be working with today is kind of unusual. Um, so the sequence of how you do things is a little bit different, but still the application of the paint is gonna be the same. The baseboards are going to be the same color as the walls, so I don't have to do any type of cutting into the baseboards and caulking my tape. The ceilings are gonna be the same color as the walls, so I'm, like, I'm cutting my edges first. One thing on um, why I do like using the product I'm gonna use in today with this really dark blue color, and I think this is gonna go with any dark colors you're gonna be using. I've never used a coat of paint before that was a true one coat paint like this paint before. So this is a one coat paint. So the process is gonna be, I'm gonna do my cut-ins first, and then I'm going to roll. And one of the things when it comes to getting the perfect finish, you have to always be working with a wet edge. And I'll talk about that and show that as we go along. A wet edge is absolutely essential to not getting lines, haloing, or lap marks. So I'm gonna begin now by doing my cut-ins and um, filling in my edges first. So the first thing I do, I'm gonna begin just filling in these corners right here. It's gonna be using a brush because my roller cannot fill this in unless I use others of a roller called a corner roller, which would actually do this without having to use your brush. Um, today, I'm gonna to be using a different roller and I'll talk about that roller and why I'm using it. Now I'm working down here with my baseboards. I'm gonna be brushing my baseboards. I've got frog tape down here, so I don't have to worry about my paint actually bleeding onto my floor. So I'll begin just brushing the paint. I'm gonna just brush it horizontal and not vertical. Wanna just get nice brush strokes on this trim. You can see how well this paint covers. Being a one coat paint, this white, this dark color going right over this white. And once again, this is kind of a very unique situation where customer wanted the trim, same color as the walls, same sheen in this movie room, being a matte finish. It's gonna look absolutely amazing with this color. I wanna take it above my trim, because I want my trim brushed. I don't want it stippled with a roller. So part of getting the perfect finish on these walls is not trying to work too much and get too ahead of you. So fill it in. And this is, I'm working one wall at a time because I want to keep a wet edge. So here we go, we're gonna get this corner done. So the sequence, you know, I'm doing this video to kind of do, um, teach you how to get a perfect finish. If I was doing this whole room, the sequence, I'd probably do the ceilings first, and then I would do the walls. That way, if you had any drips while you're doing your ceilings, they drip down your wall, it wouldn't be an issue because you're still gonna paint your walls. But now I've got this, Got this wall done. All my cut-ins are still wet. My edges right here, down at the bottom, the top, and that's essential to have a wet edge in order to not get haloing or um, haloing is what we, or hat batting what we'd call. So I'm gonna take it all the way to the top. I'm gonna just hang my brush in my bucket. So it's essential, you know, not to stop and take a lunch break now, but to Get on with the painting process. So now I'm gonna start from left. 
start rolling. And there's a lot of different ways you can apply your pain. Some people like to get it on in a V shape and then begin spreading it out. I have the method I've used that's worked for me for years. I put it straight in the middle. I overlap, keeping a wet edge just like this. And I'm going to begin spreading my paint out from the top to the bottom after I get it, get it in the middle first. To get it on this wall, get down to the bottom. So then we got a pretty heavy texture on this wall, so I do need to press pretty hard. It's essential to getting the perfect finish to constantly load your roller, keep this thing soaking wet because you want to keep your wall saturated while you're rolling. If your roller starts to dry out, or lose paint in it, you're not gonna have a wet edge. So I typically do three, three laps. So I did three laps, overlapping, keeping a wet edge, overlapping about three to four inches. Now I'm gonna go back and lay it out. I'm gonna wet my roller. I'm gonna lay out from top to bottom. Top to bottom. I'm gonna overlap it, three inches. Top to bottom, overlap three inches top to bottom. Now I'm going to begin my next three laps. This is where it's essential, keeping a work edge or a wet edge and working fast so I can get down to here where that's still wet and not dry. Put it in the middle, begin rolling it out. So you can see there's a lot of different methods. A lot of different professionals have different ways of playing paint. There's no wrong way, no right way. It's just the way that's worked for me. So I'll overlap in three inches, fill it in. You can see I'm trying to work pretty fast and efficient. That way my paint don't dry. My roller's still wet, so I don't have to necessarily fill it back in, go back to where my last laps were, top to bottom. And I definitely like laying out from top to bottom versus bottom up. If you go bottom up, you're gonna get more um, paint whipping off your roller and have splatters. No matter how you lay it off to getting the perfect finish, you have to lay it off the same time every single time. If you lay out going up one way and you lay out going down the other way, it's actually gonna change the color of your paint because it lays the, the, the paint flakes out a little bit different every single time. So if you want that perfect finish, you can't just roll your wall, get it all filled in like this, and think that that's done, because the paint being laid out in all different directions is gonna be a different color. It's gonna show lap marks, it's gonna show flashing, everything on that wall. So I'm gonna get it on, get it down all the way to the bottom, make sure you go all the way to the top so you don't have any touch-ups. Now if you, if your roller is not absolutely saturated, see if I can give you an idea what happens when your roller is not full of paint. So I can just be stretching out my paint really far like this, and I can start to hear it hiss really loud. As it starts to hiss louder and louder, it's gonna actually start pulling paint off the wall. And it's gonna start stippling your wall really bad. You're not gonna get good coverage. It needs to be a nice, sloppy, wet sound. You can hear it's like not hissing very loud at all. It's all full of paint. I'm still working efficiently. If I want to go to lunch, I want to go to lunch after I finish the wall. I'm typically going to go to lunch after I finish the room, but that can't always be the case if you're not as fast and efficient if you're new at this, but it's okay, one wall at a time. Don't want to be kicking over any buckets, move things out of your way. This way you can be fast and efficient. Keep your pan close to you. Tell you, this is another thing like um, some painters 
you know, are very particular about the direction of their roller. It's uh, very critical, like I'm rolling this direction, it could work the roller off, you know, your, um, off your frame if you're using a really cheap frame. I'm using a Blue Tiger frame, and the Blue Tiger frame is, um, has a locking device that keeps it locked on. So it's best if you flip your roller over, use it this direction, it's gonna keep it on. I just don't like the feel of it that way. But whatever direction you use it, always keep it the same direction, because I tell you, if you flip it over and you're changing it, same thing, it can lay out the tint differently and you can get lap marks on your wall. I like the feel of it, pointing that direction. Lay it out, working quick. I'm gonna tell you, here's another absolutely essential part of the painting process and getting a perfect finish is what roller you use. Uh, using a good quality paint, I, I recommend the top end paint. What I'm using today is a great paint. Um, whatever you choose, it needs to be a high end paint and preferably a one coat paint, if it truly is a one coat paint. Uh, but the roller itself, I'm using an ultra micro roller right here. This is a premier roller made in the USA for laying out um, paint like this, dark colors, laying out matte finishes. It's the best roller that I've tested and used. It's the ultra micro from Premier. So just to give you an idea, here's the roller I'm using today. This is the ultra micro, that's the Spanish side, so you can read it. Ultra micro right there, it's a microfiber roller. Um, says it's got um, exclusive Viper Fusion technology. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but it's high capacity with smooth, consistent release, solvent resistant core, it, all interior, exterior paint stains and coatings, smooth and semi-smooth finishes. So you don't want to use cheap rollers. I'm telling you right now, you'll put um, lints on your walls. You have to sand them all. It's just going to cause you more frustration than it's worth. And if you're after that amazing looking finish, like I'm after in this movie room, use quality rollers. Quality frame, quality extension pole. I'm using an extension pole, you can see. So you gotta be fast. You can't afford to be climbing up and down ladders. It's gonna take me time. By the time I get to that end, my paint's gonna be dry, and I'm gonna get a lap mark or a halo right there. So I'm using an extension pole. This is just a little um, two to four foot extension pole. Perfect for this room. Use a longer one and it's gonna to be too heavy for you. You can see that paint, this dark color going over this white paint. This truly is a one coat paint. Now I'm gonna to get to this end. This is the one time when I'm gonna flip my roller because my frame is getting in the way and it'll hit the wall. So I'm gonna load this thing up really good. Another tip, if you have a problem dripping your paints, just spin your roller where you're going and you won't drip your paint. So I'm gonna get it straight up to the edge. Make sure all that texture is filled in. Flip back over, lay out my paint. Last flip, lay it out. And there's your wall. Now I can begin working down the next wall and the next wall. I'm just gonna go from wall to wall, working one wall at a time.